Yo. Welcome back to the series. What am I doing with 20 white wool? We are so back. I should probably grab lava. Nope, it would already be there. Be smart, cat sail. I am motivated. We're going to clear out more of that uh, ocean monument. See, there's the creeper farm. Eventually, I'm probably going to drain the water around that as well in order to up the farm's efficiency, but until that arrives... Oh, it's over here. Okay. This song is just old enough to be nostalgic for me now, which is weird to think about, but it's been over a year since RSV1 was completed, and as the finale to it, it holds a special place in my heart. Like the past few uh, weeks, my brother got me to watch Kaguya. Never been a big anime person, but good show. <laughs> There's a little thing we like to discuss about like well-developed characters. And there's sort of like the Zuko rule, right? You ever seen Avatar The Last Airbender? You'd know that Zuko is debatably like the best written fictional character of all time. Or at least one of them. At least in terms of shows, Zuko would be number one. Just the consistently the consistency at which he is characterized. and the impact that his actions have on the story 
and that the story's events have on him is just beautiful. Peak storytelling, even. So imagine my surprise when this random anime love story show has, like, Zuko tier development. It's insane. I don't know. The thing I know about anime, just from hearing about it a lot, is that it can be very inconsistent. And that can make people upset. And a good series can go bad very quickly. Which, you know, is never a good thing, no matter what you're watching. <laughs> Game of Thrones. i never even seen Game of Thrones, but, you know, I still know that one. very important when writing a story that you need to have an outline of every event at least every major event and how the characters will act throughout those different events if you can't manage that then you have no business writing a story because all you're going to do is provide heartbreak to your audience when they realize that the story had no ending and you were just you know going with it you're running wild there will not be a satisfying conclusion, and that makes me upset. Writing advice with Cattail? If you aren't going to write an ending to your story, don't bother writing at all. Like, seriously. And none of this, oh, it has to be interpreted by the audience garbage. No. Nobody cares. Nobody likes that. Yes, there can be parts that need to be interpreted, but you can't have the whole story act like that. Otherwise, it's just a bad story. Don't be that guy. You may be thinking, but Cattail... I had a really cool story in mind, I just don't know how it's going to end. Well, you should probably figure out how it's going to end before you start the beginning, because you want to do a little thing called foreshadow. The best stories give you an idea of where the story is going to go, or at least very minimum where the characters are going to go. If a character has a flaw that is described at the beginning of the story, you should assume that the story is going to work on that flaw in some capacity, either by having the character grow and develop and overcome that flaw, or by having that character's flaw serve as a crucial part of the story. Can't do that. Then, well, probably ain't a good story. Because if you don't have an idea of how your story is going to end, you're not really writing a story. You're just writing, like, snippets. Really. You're, you've got pieces to a puzzle, but you don't have the picture. kind of like you're drawing, but you're not really drawing anything, you're just kind of scribbling on the page. Like, maybe it'll look good, but it's always going to be missed potential right there. Especially if you have a pretty good piece of paper, and you have a good idea of what you want to draw. But you need that destination in mind, right? Like, it's alright to not write, like, you know, large stories. You just need to know where your thing's gonna go, right? Because even, like, a small vignette has a plot to it in most, st in most cases, right? Something happens in it. You go from point A to point B.
I, it doesn't even have to be like a complex ending. You can flush out the details of your ending later. You just need to know how it's gonna end before you start it. At least on a base story or character perspective, you don't need to have both figured out at the start. Sometimes elements come to you, and you just go back and fix things, and make things more coherent. But in something like a TV show, you know, as you're writing as the seasons go along, that can be really bad, because you can unintentionally mislead your audience that the story is going to go in one direction, but you just never even thought about that at all. And what do you know, the audience is dissatisfied because you just had no idea what you were doing. And you have nobody to blame but yourself. Every time you put something in a story, there is a purpose to it in some capacity. Whether it's just describing the environment, that environment's going to be used as a setting. You're describing a character. That character, that description of the character is going to be important in some way, right? Like, if you say a character's specific colored eyes, you need to bring that up multiple times in order for that characteristic to be of note. That there is not a point to mentioning a character specific trait. then, well, why would you mention it? If only there was some sort of principle about a gun that you have and set up in a scene only for that gun to be utilized in a later scene because it was set up before. If only that was some sort of rule that applied. I don't know. More like a guideline, I guess. Of course, the thing is with the rules of storytelling is that if you have something that can work outside the rules, then go for it. But if you find that it doesn't work, maybe refer back to the rules that exist for a reason, you know? Like, I'm all for new ways to tell stories, and new versions of stories, or, well, not versions of stories, but new versions of storytelling. But, you need to acknowledge that tropes exist for a reason. Plot and consistency are not luxuries, they are essentials. And if you treat them as, a, as luxuries, then you can also treat audience investment like a luxury. Because if your audience does not have a plot or a character to latch onto, what are they gonna do? Why are they watching? Bright, colorful lights? They can get that by going to a fireworks show. Or looking up a dubstep video on YouTube. You don't need to be the best storyteller in the world to tell a good story. You don't even need to be a good storyteller to tell a good story. You just need to be, like, you know, good at setting things up. Because if you're good at setting things up, then you can always have somebody else deliver for you. Assuming that person's a good storyteller. <laughs> I guess that's the point I'm trying to make here. A good storyteller can deliver, but you don't need to be a good storyteller to set something up, you know? That's why clickbait exists.
I think the reason I'm so passionate about storytelling is because, like, stories are the lifeblood of, well, life, I guess. Your life, in essence, is a story that is being told in real time. And that's pretty cool, right? You're a main character, surrounded by the side characters. You have your, you each have your own plots and thoughts. You know, maybe you're not a main character of life, but you have your own spinoff at the very least. Now, is it a good spinoff? I don't know. I don't know you. But, you got a chance to tell a good story. So, tell one. A story does not need to have complex twists and turns to be a good story. A good story can just be a feel-good tale of success and hardship and other things. Is cool is they're just linked to how we think. The characters we like most are the characters that we either think are fascinating, we want to be like, or we just have some sort of connection to. with characters is great. It's a natural part of reading stories. Protagonist is the hero, though. Huh. Like this song, for instance. This song is about fighting a bounty hunter who is a complete gamer. It's just a funny concept. But also... Raises a few questions, like... How does... Being... A person that plays video games affect their skills at actually being able to hunt people down. Does it help? Does it hurt? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Is the character a full joke? Almost. Like, very close to yes, but no. They can be a serious threat. But they can also just kind of be seen as annoying as well. dichotomy of gamers.
Is that one of the larger sections? I think so. It's like December, and sometimes in my mind, I'm just like, oh yeah, it's still 2022. Like, seriously, can't tell. What's wrong with you? It's like back in school, you just like, write the wrong date on the pages sometimes. embarrassing honestly sponges please wonder what happened to the fish that were in here I have rewritten this song so many times, and I want to rewrite it again. It's just not tense enough. the old version of clip art. Yeah, no, that's, uh... Gonna go goodbye. The new version that I came up with completely on accident in the middle of Mechanical Heat, which is completely unrelated to song, to literally everything. Just, it's so much better. Going viral was like one of the first ideas for a song that I had. 
Ascension was the first one I ever made, but Going Viral was one of the first ones I can I think Going Viral was the first song I ever wanted to make. And by that I mean I wanted to make, like, myself. I've been making songs for quite a while now, actually, now that I think about it. I want to say, like, 2019 is when I got started. It's been quite a bit, but... I've improved quite a lot. Like, this is a very old song right here. I actually don't know why I came up with a lot of the snow songs first. I guess it's just a really easy vibe to cap catch. Blah. Also, this song isn't even, or it wasn't even a waltz the first time I made it. So a waltz has to be in three quarters time. And when I first made this song, it was not in three quarters time. So I literally remade the song in three quarters time in order for it to actually qualify as a waltz. I still do not know music theory. So, um... Now, don't come asking me about that kind of thing. I go by the policy of if it sounds good, it's probably good. Now, don't ask me to read sheet music, please. I can't. I may or may not have cheated in order to make the art for uh, Spotlight. Not, yeah, Spotlight. Spotlight? Spotlight. I still have so much to do, so many places to go, so many things to see. But it'll all be worth it. All for those precious sea lanterns. <laughs> I could have just used frog lights. Like it would have been so much easier. <laughs> Imagine I actually get the sea lanterns and I'm just like, nah, they don't look that good. I'm gonna get frog lights instead. I probably should have checked that before I started doing this, but. You know what? Can, can you blame me though?
that was too much. I just wasted like three sponges there. There's still something in the corner. Is that correct spacing? One, two, three, four, five. It is not correct spacing. I'm just out of it right now. There we go. I was actually like listening to this for a second. I was like, is this factory or is this automation? It's factory. I, I'm not. Somehow I just forgot which one this one was. Which, they're both pretty old. Factory is older, but. Thing. I suppose I should probably at some point mention why I love Angelica's theme so much. It's the one character theme I continually associate with myself as well as the character. Like, to a very large degree. Like, Angelica's theme could be considered kind of my secondary theme at this point. And, well, I guess there's a couple reasons why. One of which is that I just really like the theme. Another is that it's in three quarters time which I think makes it really unique to listen to in a uh, normal... I, I don't know how to say not three quarters, is it four quarters? Full? I don't know. But in like an ordinary time signature, it makes it interesting to listen to. Another reason is that Angelica is my favorite character of mine. For a while it was Mew Mew, but it's not anymore. This doesn't count as a parent picking favorites, because I think it's kind of weird to consider both, you know, a child and their children as your children like it's I guess technically I am the god of their world but not really also there, there's a lore video that'll come out like in two years it'll be fine
but yeah. Jock is just a good character. At least to me. One day, the world will see, and I will be judged very harshly. But until that day comes, let me add this. Another reason for it is that it's a very compact theme. You can fit it into half of a time signature, or what, what are they called? Half of a quarter? I don't know what to call those. Oh my goodness! Some supersonic racing right there. I want to get out of here. Thank you. Might as well finish it off. Yeah. If you actually listen to the three cattail songs, you will notice a couple things. One of which being what character themes are in there. You got your internet cat from Mew Mew. You got your Angelica's theme in 2022 because it didn't exist in the 2021 one. I haven't made the theme yet when that happened. Also, thematically, it fits very well in the 2022 one as opposed to the 2021 version. Now you got Augustine's theme. Another personal favorite and a character I connect to pretty well. Very much so based off of myself in a lot of areas. Not so much in others, especially now. But back when? Yeah. And then you got Azaleans. Which, uh, they didn't have a theme when the 2021 song came out. So I used a different theme for a substitute. And it was fine, kind of. It was replaced in the mask. So, I didn't have to wait to the 2022 version to replace it. Oh, the Obsidian Dragon's also a very old song. I wasn't even realize it had been playing.
Uh, oh, this is Drown. The worst one of the, uh, Gauntlet 4. And I don't think it's close either. Oh, Marcus. Always the last character that I cared about. I still don't really care about him. Literally, the only reason he exists is because I asked one of my friends for ideas for characters, and they said Feminist Turtle. And thus, you get Marcus. I mean, he's a bit more complex now than just Feminist Turtle. But... Back when, that's what he was, and I made him that way, and now he is just that. Uh, respawn, right? Yeah. The companion piece to gamers never die, and these two will always seem to show up on stream. Like always. crafting table. Thank you. Having the banners just makes the walls look so much better. Fortunately, well, I'm just always running out of wool. But... I've thought about making like Choir of Burb too, but I really don't know what I'd do for it.
if I ever need the quartz. I guess we could go pick up some sea lanterns and see how they look. They're over here. Bricks, prisoner, darkness, or sea lanterns. Actually, I probably should have brought some, some, something. I don't know. Some walls. I kind of like it floating like that. Of course, now we need to see it at night. I recently remade one of the Rando Turagas. And I'm excited to have the opportunity to uh, use the new new one. Christian's Rando Turaga is one of the songs that I mentioned earlier that's really old. It's gone through so many iterations. Like, more so than any other song.
turning down the street. Is that what they mean by something getting the axe? Oh yeah, there's the X. Why would I why would I remember the original? and those fences just go flying. To not go flying. Seriously.
give me that. Why is building with fences the most annoying thing ever? I really like this. I really like it. Oh my goodness. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. Oh, that needs to go. Oh, that needs to go. started flying everywhere too. Getting upset. I love the fact that they also just kind of float there. It looks so nice. Also, it brought to my attention the fact that this portal is not centered. I can just make a bigger portal later.
that was a real saw blade, I would have just killed myself. beautiful. It's so beautiful. What does it look like again? Ah. Right. Uh. I can't tell which one's which. Oh, that's what it looks like. Okay. Random insanity songs tonight.
Give me that. See, once we actually like get all the terraforming and the roads out of the way, then we can add stuff like fountains, and it'll look really nice. We're gonna grow like potatoes and carrots alongside the road, and it'll just be great. in a forest probably wasn't my smartest idea, but it was an idea that I did have. Oh. We're full. Why do we have like two oak planks? I don't even know where the stack of oak planks came from. 